You're watching Special Report Television with your host, Joan London. Almost every parent has felt the frustration and worry that comes when you're trying to get your child to eat healthfully. Many turn to their pediatrician for answers, so we asked our resident pediatrician, Dr. Lane France, to respond to some mothers that we gathered together to talk about their children's eating problems. Now, my children would graze all day if you would let them. Mealtime would be a disaster, but they would eat all day long, a little bit here, a little bit there. And then you sit down at mealtime and they go, I'm not hungry. I don't eat this, mm -hmm. or I want something else, or this doesn't taste good, or eat it. And then your dinner table turns into a battleground. There are as many ideas about children's eating problems as there are children who eat. Most experts agree with Monica, however, that mealtime should not be a battleground. Rather, it should be a pleasant, relaxed time of communication. How you achieve that varies. My own feeling is that children should be offered a balanced diet. If they want it, fine. If they don't, fine. Don't force feed or bribe them and don't get upset. The overwhelming majority will eat when they're hungry. Most children actually eat more than their parents think they do. My children have to be coaxed into eating. We tell them, oh, it's so delicious and it's good <laughs> and everything and it tastes so good and it's so wonderful. They're both very thin. People always say, they're so tiny, they're so little, especially for my little boy, you know, and this guy that I work with is always saying, well, how much does your son weigh? And my son weighs this amount. Many parents have the same problem Denise has, and that's family or outside intervention. In these situations, use your common sense. Don't worry what other people say, and don't compare your child to other children. I would say to Denise and other moms that I honestly worry more about children who eat too much rather than too little, those who are too fat, not too thin. Adults often tell children to clean everything off their plates, but if children say they're full, believe them. Forcing them to overeat could create bad eating habits as they grow up. Mine are finicky about what they like and don't like. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich, forget it. No, sir. Grilled cheese sandwiches, nothing like that. They just inspect everything before they eat it. It has to be just right. And one day they'll love it, and then the next day it's the, I mean, the, the grossest thing that they ever saw. Many children are finicky eaters. One minute they love a food, the next minute they hate it. Most children go through these phases, so try reintroducing rejected foods at a later date. It's important to get good eating habits started young and try to stick with them. It's often frustrating and it's always a challenge, but perseverance and patience will pay off. Well, do you guys remember some of the things you used to do when you were kids and you didn't want to oh, eat yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, you like fill up your mouth with your peas. Excuse me, I have to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Or put try to hide belt. them under the, yeah, uh -huh. put them in your pocket or something. Rearrange it yeah. mm -hmm. nicely and mm -hmm. hide peas under knives and things like that. So why do we expect them to be any different, really? That's true. <laughs> How much pizza do Americans eat every day? A, enough to cover three football fields, including end zones. B, enough to cover 27 football fields, including end zones. Or C, the equivalent of 56 football fields, including end zones. The answer is C, everyday Americans consume about 75 acres of pizza. That's the equivalent of about 56 football fields. Last year, the Food and Drug Administration issued new guidelines that will help make ingredient labels on food products more understandable. Manufacturers have until 1993 to comply. So in the meantime, here's SRTV food industry analyst Phil Lempert with a few tips on how to decipher the small print and gobbledygook on the back of those packages. Take a look at this. You think you're buying a turkey dinner, don't you? Well, you're really buying a gravy dinner. There's a lot of products out there like this. Did you ever wonder why gravy comes first? Well, it's no accident. The federal government makes them do that. That's because there's more gravy in this package than meat. Let's take a look to see just how much. I've separated the turkey from the gravy, and let's see what we got. Now, I've adjusted the scale to compensate for the package. We've got about a third of a pound of turkey. Let's see how much gravy there is. Over a pound more. When you pick out a product in the supermarket, don't just go by the front of the package. Turn it around and check out the ingredient panel. It tells you some very important things about what you're buying. The ingredients are listed in descending order by weight. And watch out for the technical jargon that manufacturers use that you need to unscramble. Words that end in OSE are usually sugars. Sodium anything is salt. Read that ingredient panel. 
Special Reports Television is brought to you by Colgate, the world's leading toothpaste, and by Tylenol, the pain reliever hospitals use most. Because people have been so expressive about the taste of baking soda toothpaste, Colgate introduces new Colgate baking soda toothpaste with extra fine baking soda, natural mint flavor, and fluoride for healthy white teeth. It's the better tasting baking soda toothpaste. People couldn't be more expressive about it. So try the baking soda toothpaste with a taste you'll smile about. New Colgate baking soda toothpaste, the better tasting one. We guarantee you'll love the taste of new Colgate baking soda toothpaste. Look for a money back guarantee and 40 cent coupon in the Aging Gracefully booklet. I wasn't expecting to be in the hospital for two weeks. Suddenly there I was, having a cesarean. David was wonderful. And when it was all over, I had this perfect little person. And a lot of pain. Later I was kind of surprised when the doctor gave me Tylenol. With all the other choices they have, but the Tylenol made me feel better. So I could put my mind on more important things. Tylenol, the pain reliever hospitals use most. Coming up, a family of sculptors carves out a place in history after this. Come on, one inch farther. Let's go. Snickers Bar, the official snack food sponsor of the 1992 U.S. Olympic team. Packed with fresh roasted peanuts, thick milk chocolate, and caramel, Snickers satisfies the hunger inside you. I hope she'll be a poet. Oh, is either going to be a brain surgeon or a plumber. President of the United States. Or well, maybe I would like her to be a concert pianist. At Gerber, we know you only want the best for your baby. So to help build strong, healthy bodies, we design our apple juice to deliver more vitamin C than the leading adult apple juices. Definitely a center fielder for St. Louis. Gerber, because we know you only want the best for your baby. You're watching Special Report Television with your host, Joan London. This is the story of a man who dreamed big and of a family held together by a mission that only their grandchildren might live to see fulfilled. It's a story of sculptor Korchak Julkowski, who in 1948 began an enormous and controversial undertaking to turn a mountain into a monument. This fellow said to me, Mr., how do you know the crazy horse is in that mountain? And I said, well, I'll tell you what I do. Every morning up there, I drill about eight, 10, 16 foot holes. And then I fill them full of dynamite. And just as I pull up the plunger, I say, crazy horse, are you there? And I push the plunger down, and he says, mm. Korchak Jolkowski was a successful sculptor from Boston who got a taste of the West while working briefly on Mount Rushmore. But his life changed when he received an unusual letter from Chief Henry Standing Bear of the Sioux. He asked Korchak, will you carve us a mountain so the white men will know the red men had great heroes too? And that line stuck in Korchak's head. And he always said he was a storyteller in stone, and that was a story, and it needed to be told. It was an epic story in the history of our country from the other side. I didn't intend to make it this large, you know. I intended to make something 100 feet high. And I said, oh, what the hell, I got no place to go. I'll carve the whole mountain. Now, now they knew I was crazy. And Korchak carried on in spite of the fact that he had arthritis. He had six discs out of his back. He'd had open heart surgery in 1982, but he, he carried on. Korchak died later that year, but his work lives on, continued by his wife Ruth and eight of their ten children. Dad was born on Crazy Horse's death day. The Indians believed that it just traveled and it uh, entered his Crazy Horse's spirit and entered my dad's. Dad gave us his dream, but he also, Dad and Mom gave us just being their children. And so it's our dream now, but Mom and Dad gave it to us. 
But mom and dad had the hardest part. They, they were told they were crazy for 20 years, and they made it so people would believe in Crazy Horse. The project is a lifelong undertaking because the mountain is so big, and there's so much involved in it. To get an idea of its enormous size, consider that all four faces of Mount Rushmore would easily fit right into Crazy Horse's head. And when it's finished, the opening under his outstretched arm will be tall enough to contain a 10-story building. So far, more than 8 million tons of rock have been blasted off the mountain. That's about the weight of 35,000 Statues of Liberty. Actually, it's the same type of rock as Rushmore, only this is finer grained, and it has a reddish color. And as Korchak said, he didn't want to carve a white Indian anyway. It sounds like a cliche now that he's passed away, but he believed that if while you were alive, you made the world a little better place for people who came after you, then your life had been worth living. where nature ends. Mark Chagall. Special Reports Television is brought to you by Dodge, a division of Chrysler Corporation, where you get the advantage. And by M&M's Candies, the milk chocolate melts in your mouth, not in your hands. From coast to coast, Dodge Caravan has happily served more families than any other minivan. But we've made it even better because we've come up with an all-wheel drive Dodge Caravan. So now you not only get a vehicle loaded with safety features, including the first minivan airbag, you've got one that automatically handles just about anything the weatherman can throw at it. No shifting, no levers, no sweat. The all-wheel drive Dodge Caravan, a great way to rediscover American value. When you come from a small town, you've got nowhere to go but up. Spreading joy and magic, making friends in every land. M&M's can. M&M's, the milk chocolate melts in your mouth, not in your hand. Worldwide sponsor of the 1992 Olympic Games. I don't have to win. I've already won. Coming up, the paper chase. Why is mom taking over Junior's paper route after this? They're watching. Millions of eager eyes connected to bendable, shapeable little minds. Tuned in, transfixed, entranced by every image, absorbed by every detail. And what are they watching? That's up to you. If it's HBO, they'll see timeless stories they'll love because they're fun. Every morning, 8 to 9 a.m., commercial free. HBO for kids. Why? Because they're watching. Yeah, we milk about 200 head a day. No, nope. couldn't drink a drop. I'm the dairy farmer who couldn't drink milk. <laughs> Are his legs? I think he's okay. My stomach could go crazy. No milk and cookies for Miriam. But that was before they came out with Dairy's milk. It's great. Finally, I can enjoy real milk like anybody else. Even the cows seem to respect me more. <laughs> and to enjoy other dairy products, try Dairy E's tablets. You're watching Special Report Television with your host, Joan London. Just who is it that tosses your morning paper onto your doorstep? If you think it's the paper boy, think again. That youthful symbol of American hustle and enterprise has changed along with the times. It's a picture that's part of history. Kids pitching papers along their delivery routes or hawking them in the street to make a little extra money. But in the last 10 years, the percentage of paper delivering kids has dropped from 90% to 66%. In effect, the newspaper boy has grown up. Come on, Steph. Pat Shropshire of Detroit, Michigan is one of almost 200,000 adults who delivers newspapers, a number that has more than doubled in the last 10 years. 
Pat, helped by her family, delivers about 100 copies of the Detroit News every day, supplementing their income by up to $60 a week. Now these are nice people. The man that lives right here. Now we're going to go up. On the other part of the same street is some of the best, nicest houses, shady, well kept. Pat works like an average that. of two hours a day. You could go out here and get any kind of a job in one of these stores or, a, like I said, a fast food restaurant, any kind of a job. It's a good way to make extra money and still have your independence. There's an instant um, an opportunity for adults because they can handle more papers, they can make more profit, uh, they can supplement incomes and have flexibility in their time and their hours. They'll come in, they'll work for two hours, they'll split, and they'll make some decent money, and uh, they'll do what it may take four kids to do. In addition to delivering papers, Pat coordinates other carriers in her district, a job that earns her a little extra income. Which one? Bill, do you have enough papers? Yeah, he left me two twelve. He left you exactly enough? Yeah. Let me see if Hank's got 10 Still, some to industry professionals wish the kids would come back. Frenchie Fuqua recruits carriers for the Detroit newspaper agency. Well, I think that uh, we're losing a, a heck of an institution. I think uh, our youth, uh, being a carrier, was an institution, not only for our city, but a lot of major cities across the United States. Uh, what, do they, what do they say? It dates back to Benjamin Franklin. Come on, this was uh, an opportunity for a kid to start off in this business world, and it's a very, very competitive world out here. And we're losing it, I believe. But Pat includes the whole family in her job. She's teaching them some values and teaching them some things, and forcing them to, hey, come on, before you do your homework, before you go to the field, you know, we're going to do this. We're going to do this an hour and a half every day, or whatever it takes. I have all kinds of help today. But it's kind of neat to see a family get involved like that. We're all winning because of people like her. For more ideas about how to supplement your income, take home the special report booklet, How to Make Extra Cash. It's yours free, along with four other booklets in the rack near the TV set.